1985. Um, it's been it's been a long time, and um, these laws are now outdated. The introduction of the internet has happened since 1985, and the population has grown quite significantly. Uh, that's why the um, Andrews government have decided uh, to decriminalise sex work, and we've asked um, the former chairman and peers um, to do uh, sex sex work and have a look at how uh, decriminalisation of sex work should look like. We've um, got terms of reference that um, Fiona will be um, working on and she'll be consulting a whole range of stakeholders and will be seeking a wide range of views as well as this model and how decriminalisation will look like. Um, there'll be stakeholders that will be consulted, um, government, federal and state agencies. about ensuring the safety and well-being of sex workers and stigma associated with their work, ensuring that their workplaces are safe and compliant with all um, workplace laws. This is also about ensuring that um, sex work, the regulation of sex work, operates like um, any other business in Victoria. Is it legal to legalise the street work? Well, I won't preempt um, the review that the panel will undertake. Certainly, ask as part of the terms of reference to look at all sex work, including straight sex work. Is it sex work? Well, legal brothels are obviously uh, uh, decriminalised, but as we've seen over the years, there's been a proliferation of massage parlours popping up all over the state, um, and unfortunately, a lot of sex workers are operating outside the legal outside the legal framework. So I'm just confused because you were talking about something that happened in 's not about legal or illegal brothels although certainly the, the legislation because it is so outdated has made it very difficult for people to actually even comply with the law you know we had the first legislation in Victoria in 1985 some of it was amended in 1994 to actually make it even more difficult to operate within the legal structure and Victoria was a leader in 1985 but it's not fit for purpose now and in the 21st century we need a new style of legislation and decriminalisation is quite different to legalisation and it is the preferred model. It is World Health Organisations, Amnesty International, all sex worker rights organisations and even the Northern Territory just last night um, amended their legislation to take on a decriminalisation model. So does that imply going to the that that means that you'd like to see a change so that anyone um, working as a sex worker is free to do so without, without regulation or without penalty or freedom of penalty. I think we need to recognise that sex work is work and it has been around probably since time immemorial. So we need to look at regulation that is fit for purpose for the 21st century. Sex work is probably quite different to what it was in 1985. We've got a gig economy, we've got far more people working independently, um, and also the, the brothels are operating under incredibly outdated legislation that has actually seen a proliferation of businesses working, let's say, in the grey market. What are some of the problems with the current legislation? As I say, the, the legislation is so restrictive uh, that it didn't recognise that we had the internet. In fact, the internet wasn't invented when these laws were first put into place. So now we need legislation and we need regulations that recognise that a lot of the services are, um, are advertised online, that a lot of the business operates in an online space. And as we've got you know, fly-in, fly-out workers, We've got, um, we've got brothels that are operating under 30-year-old regulations and I, I would challenge any business to operate under laws that are nearly 
that are over 30 years old. So when, what is your view specifically about sprints as well? I, I would be very interested to hear from the community about this issue. We saw in New South Wales, they actually decriminalised street sex work. I think Victoria probably has got a different structure and I think we need to find laws that meet the, the needs of Victoria and, and Victorian sex workers. Whether that is a decriminalisation model or some other model, we'll, we'll probably, we will explore during this review. Is there a concern um, that street sex workers are not inclined to report crimes committed against them for fear of being prosecuted themselves? Oh, it's not just street sex workers, it's all sex workers that have, um, sorry, it's not just street sex workers, it's all sex workers that are resistant and hesitant about reporting sex crimes. Uh, maybe they haven't gone through the, the registration process that um, the, the Business Licensing Authority insists upon. Maybe their house hasn't been approved by the regulations that it should be. So we find that probably less than 25% of sexual assaults against sex workers in their workplace are reported and up to 40% of them report that they had a very negative experience um, in that reporting. Minister, just to confirm that the, the government will decriminalise all sex work if that's what the review finds? Correct. How, and, and when how, will sorry. the inquiry start? Sorry. So the inquiry will start uh, next year. It'll be supported by a secretariat um, in my department that will provide uh, Fiona with the support and resources that she needs. We hope that the inquiry uh, will be concluded by the 31st of August um, next year, where Fiona will make some recommendations uh, to the government. We'll consider all of the recommendations uh, that Fiona makes uh, to government. Um, and then we will proceed to introduce legislation sometime in 2021. So is Fiona doing this on her own? This is not like a parliamentary committee type arrangement? Well, um, as I said earlier on, uh, Fiona will be reviewing the legislation. There will be support of the Secretariat provided by my department. Fiona will consult a range of um, stakeholders seeking their views and also looking at alternative um, options for decriminalisation. Um, once Fiona makes her recommendations uh, to me, we'll go to Cabinet and we'll consider those recommendations. And um, Fiona, did you ask to do this? Or how did all this come about? Certainly uh, the Reason Party and, and myself have been advocating for law reform in this area uh, for, for many years. So I've certainly been urging the government to move on, on law reform. And we have seen an escalation of sexual violence uh, in, in our industry. We've seen greater concerns from sex workers. So it, there, has been, there has been an increasing urgency for us to modernise our laws in Victoria. It's and fair to say, isn't it, this is a big part of the reason why you got into politics? Yes, this is certainly. I, I probably cut my teeth in politics on, on sex work law reform in 1984 with the uh, Attorney General's Working Committee in the ACT. So yes, this has been uh, this has been something that is very important to me, and I think it's very important that we recognise that sex work is work, and we can take some of we can address some of the stigma that is still attached to this industry, and we can ensure that workers are safe and secure um, in their work. Will this be job done for you? Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a mission accomplished. Uh, <laughs> But no, the, it, it, it certainly is. It's great to see because Victoria was a leader in 1985. And I think this gives us an opportunity to be a leader again, um, to be progressive, to be forward thinking on how we address this, this industry. Is, Minister, is this, is this a new model of, of reviewing laws to, to, to pick an MP and send them off to, your, to, to a department with all the strength of the department uh, to do some no, no, Richard, you probably weren't around at the time and neither was I when Craig Ingram uh, did something similar to this as well. So it, it's certainly uh, not a new model. But have you, have you sort of allowed Fiona to do this as part of a deal for any other jokes that she's had in Parliament? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, Fiona and I have had conversations about this ever since I became the Minister for Consumer Affairs. Um, this is simply the right thing to do. Uh, the laws are outdated and this is about ensuring uh, that sex workers human rights are protected and that they're safe and secure in the workplace. So next we'll have Bernie Finn's one-man review of religious 
three minutes too. Well, then you can come try. Don't force us to play speed. <laughs> 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 It's a pretty sweet deal, though. No, look, I, I, I actually, I, I find it a very sensible, and I'm, I, I feel very privileged to, to have this opportunity, to, to look at this. But as I say, you know, this has been my bread and butter work for, for the last 25 years. So I think to have the opportunity to work with the department, to be able to have these conversations with sex workers, with the sex industry. Look, I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to do this, uh, but it's it's going to be a lot of work uh, and it's going to, to add to my workload and so I don't think it's a sweet deal, but I'm very pleased to have this opportunity. And six months time frame for the review, do you think that's enough? Look, I think there is, there is so much passion and there is so much urgency out there in the community and certainly amongst sex workers. Uh, for this review to happen, that I think we can get everyone around the table uh, within the time frame. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.